the space race of the 1950s and 60s. Russian and American satellites rocketed into Earth orbit for the first time. The astronauts of Gemini and Vostok became the first humans to look down on Earth from space. The astronauts of Apollo walked on the moon. Bounding along hillsides. Picking up rocks. And exploring craters. It was a new age of exploration. Animated by grand ambitions. we began to contemplate missions to planets beyond our solar system, perhaps inhabited by intelligent life forms. It was also a new age of foreboding. Science fiction probed the dark complexities of venturing into the final frontier. What were the consequences of making contact with alien forms? Right here, eat us. Here, eat us. Uh, Yours is the only planet in this solar system capable of supporting our civilization. What would happen if they came here? Fantastic. Over a billion of you trying to come here to Earth. We have no alternative. We have been putting our plan to work for some time. We began to ask, would an interstellar voyage of the future be a mission of survival? Launched in the wake of nuclear apocalypse? Or in the midst of festering ecological collapse? The physicist Stephen Hawking famously warned us we face a number of threats to our survival. From nuclear war, catastrophic global warming, and genetically engineered viruses. The number is likely to increase in the future with the development of new technologies and new ways things can go wrong. He went on. We need to expand our horizons beyond planet Earth if we are to have a long-term future. Spreading out into space and to other stars so a disaster on Earth would not mean the end of the human race. That was the motive that sent the futuristic astronauts of Avatar to explore and conquer the utopian moon Pandora. Ecological devastation forced the underground remnants of NASA to concoct a trip through a wormhole to find new worlds in the movie Interstellar. One thing has always been clear. We will not be riding the chemical rockets that fueled the space age. To escape Earth's gravity, a Saturn V rocket must accelerate to 25,000 kilometers per hour. The faster it goes, the more fuel it burns. The more fuel it burns, the more fuel it has to carry. To transport astronauts to the moon, a Saturn V had to carry 16 times its weight in fuel. It takes so much fuel just to get into space that most spacecraft can only coast to their destinations. The twin Voyager spacecraft gained additional speed by using Jupiter and Saturn as gravitational slingshots. 
after accelerating to 62,000 kilometers per hour, Voyager 2 became the first man-made vehicle to exit the solar system. But as fast as it's going, Voyager would take another 73,000 years to reach the nearest star system, Alpha Centauri. Over the years, scientists have contemplated new types of rocket fuels and engines for long-distance space flight. They proposed fission rockets in the 1960s and fusion rockets in the decades since. Antimatter rockets, the stuff of science fiction, are still on the drawing boards. This fuel is so potent, it would only take a thousandth of a gram to send a spacecraft to Jupiter. No one yet knows how to produce, capture, and store antimatter. It may be too dangerous to even try. Stephen Hawking proposed another type of fuel. Backed by a decidedly hopeful vision of the human future, it would arise instead from a long-term effort to power civilization in more efficient and far cleaner ways. It derives from his own breakthroughs in the understanding of black holes. Albert Einstein's theories showed that a black hole's gravity is so extreme that nothing, not even light, can escape its grasp. Hawking showed that black holes actually glow with heat radiation. It's energy that would come from tiny particles emerging from the vacuum of space at the event horizon. As they radiate out, they slowly bleed off the black hole's mass. After trillions upon trillions of years, this radiation ramps up. As the black hole shrinks, it glows, then finally explodes. There are theories that say you could create black holes by colliding subatomic particles at extremely high energies. These black holes would be small and on the verge of disappearing due to the release of Hawking radiation. If Hawking's vision is correct, the physics experiments now taking place at the Large Hadron Collider near CERN, Switzerland, could be the ancestors of a black hole maker. If at some time in the future, many black holes could be created and preserved, they could serve as extremely efficient power plants capable of generating heat and electricity. They would be ideal for powering long-distance spaceflight. Two scientists have laid out the basic technical specifications of a black hole starship. It starts with a giant solar array in space to collect and store energy. This energy would then be used in a black hole fabrication lab. Gamma rays powered by the solar arrays are beamed into a central point to create the black hole. As a fuel source, 
A mini black hole would have to be able to push both itself and a spacecraft at high speeds and last decades or centuries. The optimal size is six trillionths of a meter in diameter. Even at that small size, the black hole would pack one million tons of mass. The black hole would be fed small amounts of additional mass to regulate the energy it gives off. One idea is to use the release of heat to power a gamma ray laser that would shoot out the back, pushing the craft forward. We can only speculate now about how a future generation might configure such spacecraft. Our ideas may be no more accurate than those of an ancient Greek sailboat maker asked to design a nuclear sub. This is instead a vision of the future, based on our still limited knowledge of the forces that animate the cosmos, and based on the imperatives of survival and advancement that drive our thinking in this time of uncertainty.